Okay, welcome to lecture nine. Here we're going to continue our discussion of energy. And just for a, a quick review, in the last lecture, um, we discussed work. We said work was the force applied to an object times the distance that object is moved. That's the newtons times meters. We said that unit was joules. Then we defined power. Power was the rate of doing work, so it was work over time. Joules per second, the units were watts. And then we finally started talking about specific types of energy. Here we, talk, we spoke about energy of motion, which we said was kinetic energy, and it's defined to be one half the mass times the velocity squared, or speed squared. Don't forget that factor of a half. Okay? Today we're going to discuss potential energy or gravitational potential energy. But before we do that, let's take a look at this review problem, okay? Because this is very much like what we will have on an exam. Suppose the mass of an object is doubled while its speed is quadrupled. What happens then to the kinetic energy of the object? So let's write it out. Kinetic energy is one half mv squared. That's the definition, okay? So that's one half. What are we doing to the mass? We're doubling it. So instead of m now, we have 2m, okay? What's happening to the speed? Well, the speed is quadrupled. Quadrupled means it's multiplied by 4. So here we put, instead of v squared, we put 4v, and then we square that. Now, 4 squared is 16. 2 times 16 is 32. So watch this. We get 32 times 1 half mv squared. Remember, 1 half mv squared is kinetic energy. So this is 32 times the kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy is increased by 32 times. Do not Multiply 32 times a half. You will get 16. 16 what? 16 mv squared. mv squared is not kinetic energy. One half mv squared is kinetic energy. So be very careful. Okay, so let's talk about gravitational potential energy and see what we do with this. Suppose, just suppose for a second, I take this eraser and I put it on the edge of a desk. And a New York City cockroach walks by. What happens? Well, if I drop, just drop this eraser on top of the cockroach, you know what happens? Nothing. It's a New York City cockroach. Looks up, gives me the finger, keeps going. Nothing happens. However, if from the top of the desk, if the cockroach goes by, instead of an eraser, if this was made of lead, guess what? That cockroach is going nowhere. It would be crushed and killed. Hmm. So I've done more damage. Damage, doing something, is work. So the work done is proportional, clearly, to what the weight of the object is. The heavier it is, the more damage you could do. If I drop this eraser on my toe, nothing happens. Once again, if I drop it on my, a, 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 a lead brick on my toe, probably break a, break a toe. More work would be done, more damage. Okay? Now suppose, suppose I take... Suppose I take, uh, let's say, a penny, and I drop it from the top of a building. Some wise guy drops a penny, hits me in the head. Hey, what are you doing? Okay, no big deal, right? Suppose from the top of the building, they drop a lead brick. Well, once again, that lead brick is going to kill me. Okay? Now, if I take this lead brick and drop it, on my toe, not much. If I drop it from a greater height, it's clear it will do a lot much, a lot more damage. It'll crush me. All right. So the work done or the damage done clearly depends on what the weight of the object is, and clearly the higher up it is, the more damage it can do. Right? A lead brick from a very great height would do a lot more damage than a lead brick brick dropped from three inches. So we're going to write gravitational potential energy
I'm putting gravitational, the word gravitational in parentheses, because it's always, for now, it's assumed it's gravitational potential energy, not chemical potential energy or nuclear potential energy. Potential energy I used KE, kinetic energy, potential energy, hmm, okay, I will use PE. We just said it depends on the weight. Remember what weight is? Weight is the force due to gravity. Force is MA. When a force is due to gravity, the acceleration A is replaced by G, so the weight of an object is just MG. And then we said the greater the height, the more energy it would have. So we're going to put an H here, height. Again, let's look at units, kilograms. What is G? It's meters per second squared. And what is H? It's meters. So the units are kilogram times meters squared per second squared. But we've seen this unit. We've seen it when we discussed work. And we've seen it when we discuss kinetic energy. This all has the same units of joules. So joules, kinetic energy, potential energy, and work, all are measured in joules. Kilogram, meters squared per second squared. Okay? So we call it potential energy because a lead brick sitting on top of something isn't doing anything, but it has the potential to do something if it falls all right what i want to do now is i want to put gravitational potential energy together with kinetic energy okay now i want you to understand that this course certainly is not real world what do i mean by real world well if we go back a couple of lectures and we spoke about free fall, and we said the acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second every second. The speed increases by 10 meters per second every second. But we ignored something. What did we ignore? We ignored air resistance, right? That's why raindrops do not kill us. So we're not doing real world. We're not, we're not looking at things like friction and energy loss due to uh, heat and things like that. What I want to do now is I want to define something that I'm going to call total energy total energy is really total mechanical energy but that's okay i'm going to define it to be the kinetic energy plus the potential energy so watch here's my equation te is ke plus te te if i put in the expression one half mv squared plus mg H. All I did was combine kinetic energy and potential energy. Okay? And what, the reason I'm doing this is I want to uh, introduce to you the concept of a conservation law. Okay? <laughs> a conservation. A conservation law isn't something from the Sierra Club. Okay? Here's what a conservation law for us will say. It's fairly very, very simple. Here's what it says. It says, what you start with is going to be equal to, can you guess? What you finish with. That everything must be accountable. Once again, we're ignoring energy loss. We're ignoring friction. So if we took into account friction, we'd have to take into account energy that was lost. Let me give you an example. Saturday night, you leave the house. You have $100 on you. You're going out for a good time. You come back to the house 3 in the morning. You only have $20. Does that mean... The money is not conserved. What you start with is not equal to what you finish with. No. What you finish with is equal to what you started with plus what you spent. In terms of energy, what you finish with is equal to what you started with plus whatever you lost due to friction or heat or wind resistance or whatever. But we're ignoring that. So here's what we're saying. 
what we're saying is if we start with a total energy, say 100 joules, joules of the units, no matter what I do in the problem, I must finish with a total energy of 100 joules. Now, I'm going to give you an illustration, the problem I love. I love to do this problem. I call it the diver problem. Most of you don't remember uh, um, or probably have never seen in Acapulco, the uh, natives jump off the cliffs for the tourists. So they stand on a cliff and they jump into the water and they get money for this. Okay, so let's look at our picture. Try to follow the idea. Remember, what you start with it has to be equal to what you finish with. So here's my cliff. There's a cliff and there's my diver, native, okay? And she's a little nervous, going to jump off the cliff. Now at the top, right, let's say the height is H. This is the height of the cliff, H. At the top, her speed is what? It's zero. She's standing there. Her knees are shaking, but not moving. If her speed is zero, her kinetic energy is zero. So at the top, her total energy is just mgh. It's all potential energy. So I'm going to talk you through this. Let's see if you understand. Let's suppose that at the top, her total energy is 100 joules. 100 joules, her energy at the top. Remember, her kinetic energy is zero. So that means... Her potential energy is 100 joules because it's the same as the total energy because there's no kinetic energy. Now watch. Ah, she jumps off. Ah, I guess her hair goes that way. Oh, okay. And her hands and her legs and she's screaming. So now she jumps. Halfway down, what's her total energy? Well, by conservation of energy, remember what you start with equals what you finish with. So conservation of energy is going to say the energy you start with, the total energy you start with, is going to be equal to the total energy that you finish with. Great. So if you started with 100 joules of total energy, what's her total energy halfway down? The answer is still 100 joules. Her total energy has not changed. What has changed? Well, halfway down, Do you agree her total energy is still 100 joules? But now her kinetic energy is, what, 50 joules. And her potential energy is 50 joules. It's half and half. Still adds up to 100. When she's three-fourths of the way down, her height is only one-fourth. Oops. one quarter of H. So at this point, three fourths of the way down. What's her total energy? Her total energy is still 100 joules. The total energy does not change. But can you see that as she falls, her kinetic energy is increasing her kinetic energy is increasing while her potential energy goes down, but they still have, have to add up to 100 joules. When she's three quarters of the way down, her kinetic energy now is going to be 75 joules, and so her potential energy is 25 joules. See that? And then at the instant before she hits the water, Right? If this was a cartoon, usually they jump off a cliff and land in a glass of water. But she's going to hit, hit the uh, Gulf of Mexico, let's hope. The instant before she hits the water, remember, at that instant, her height is just about zero. Right? She's a nanometer in front, uh, above the water. If her height is about zero, then what's her potential energy? Well, her potential energy just before she hits is zero. So if her potential energy is zero, what's her total energy? It's still 100 joules. Now that 100 joules of potential energy at the top was converted completely, because H is zero, completely into kinetic energy. 
So we've got this idea of total energy not changing. At the top, it's all potential. As she falls, her potential energy is going down, smaller, because her height's getting smaller, but her kinetic energy is going up. Her potential energy plus her kinetic energy must equal the original total energy. Okay? In the next video, we'll do a numerical example of this.